Hey guys, what is up? It is Will, and I'm coming at you with another video. This video I've been wanting to make forever, probably since I made my YouTube channel. I'm going to be going in depth at the process of leveling a character completely. We're going to split it up into two parts. So part one is going to be if you have a max level carrying you, if you have an alt account, if you have essentially someone doing most of the work. And then part two is going to be if you choose to solo, if you don't have a max level, if you don't have friend, like a friend to carry you through the game. And I am fairly confident in my skills. I have maxed over 17 wizards in my time on this game, which compared to some of you is child's play. However, I do think I am fairly educated in questing and leveling and just being efficient in leveling and using your time well. So let's get right into it. I'm not going to waste your time any longer. I know this video is going to be a long one, so buckle up, enjoy the ride, and let's get to it. So we're going to split this up into multiple parts solely because there are four arcs in Wizard 101, so there's four different setups, four different decks, you get it. So in arc one, you don't need to focus on anything really my storm can basically barrel through all of the worlds in arc one with in just effortlessly the only world that i would suggest having a faint having a blade is dragon spire because bosses start to get just slightly above the damage that you do with your tempest I am going to state this, I am only going to be using storm references because I have not tried to level or carry another wizard using another school. So my Tempest does around, I think, 4,000 now. You have a boss that's 4,250, there you go. But by the time you're in Dragonspire, you'll already have Faint, you'll already have Blades, everything that you need to basically carry you through the game. So a lot of people... When they're thinking of a first deck, they think, oh, I need balance blades, scorpions, scarabs, whatever, wand hits, ew. Um, no. So, this is my deck for Arc 1. <laughs> As you can see, I'm relying solely on my pet utility spells, and that's essentially it. I recommend the Snappy Griffin to almost everybody who is planning on having someone carry them solely because you get that balance blade and you get that faint right out of the gate and that'll carry you through dragon spire it's very good uh stats i'm not very too concerned about stats it's arc one you're not doing any damage you don't need to do any damage unless you want to do the spell quests i always recommend training your pet but you'll see why i don't really care at this moment in time so, unfortunately, you can't unlock Mass Faint until level 20. There's a reason. You don't need Mass Faint until level, like, 45. You do not need Mass Faint until level, or until Dragon Spire. At that point, you start encountering bosses that are 4,000, 5,000, even 10,000 health. Malastare is 10,000 health. So, essentially, all the way up until Dragon Spire, you can one round temp kill every round every person every enemy you're fine the one exclusion is the jade oni who has 7500 health just pass a couple rounds you'll kill it effortlessly so you want to have the dorgan hat i choose to have it at level 20 just so i can have it and be done with it and equip it because i don't change my gear i change it very rarely in this entire setup essentially so as you can see I'm level 100 and I still have a level 20 hat. <laughs> it's very useful. You're only using it for the spell. There you go. So you reach Dragon Spire, you have Faint, you have Balance Blade, you have Mass Faint, but you also have a thousand training points because you didn't decide you, you didn't train anything. Now you can look at every single tutorial tip, guide, walkthrough, whatever. Everybody trains Tower Shield first. In this situation, and only this situation alone, train faint. <laughs> uh, if you're soloing, you're going to need 
more defensive strategies. However, in this, you do not. You are only there to provide buffs and an easy death and a quick one. So with this, you train faint. It takes seven training points. And then right after that, I would definitely recommend training into elemental blade or spirit blade, whichever one your high level wizard is. So once you have all that ready, your deck should look a little bit more like this. And with this deck, we are finally ready to enter Arc 2, which consists of Celestia, Zephyria, Avalon, and Azteca, as well as Chrysalis. This is where things get a little bit more like mumble jumbled, because really, you're going to start adding on to this deck. Um, so Celestia, Zephyria, Avalon, and half of Azteca are super easy. All you basically need are feints, blades, mass faint. Oh, what happened to my mass faint hat? There we go. <laughs> Our feints, blades, mass faint hat, and you're perfect. You literally do not need to train anything else besides this. Um, I will be going into the strategy in a little bit. I just want to explain a little bit more. So when you reach level 84 i would do the sun school quest which in azteca which essentially gives you punishment chastisement for balance and you can look up your school specific one but it's helpful i would get your school school specific one just because i always love these and then at level 86 you get sharpened blade and potent trap at this point you are going to have a deck that looks like this a little bit so this is when we start getting into a much nitty gritty type deck, if that makes any sense. So as you can see, we no longer need our pet and we have Potent Trap, Sharpened Blade. We have a total of seven cards. This is what is going to carry you through the rest of the game. Now, before I go any further, I want to explain why we were putting off the pet. So essentially, you need 4,075 experience to get a pet from baby to mega. You get four experience every single quest you turn in, essentially. So if you divided that by four, 4,075 by four, you get approximately 1,018. There are about 1,186 quests from Avalon into Caramel. By that point, you should have a firm enough standing to start getting mega snacks start dipping your toes in pet training especially if you're a new player with me i have these already i just get them to ultra using the pet experience that you get from quests when you reach avalon i would highly suggest to take a break start getting a pet base i highly recommend getting a proof and giver base it's universal you can use that as a base to train any pet essentially which is what i do and it'll be very helpful because essentially you don't need to spend 4075 experience to level up a pet you don't need this pet to survive this pet is essentially getting leveled up for free so keep that in mind i would definitely start recommending focusing on a pet that you really want for a more permanent end game type of scenario. I have a really funny example. I showed you guys in my character, what's it called, promenade, I guess you should say. But this is my pet XP quest turning in pet. I have, I, I'm in, think sardonyx on this character and i've leveled it solely using the pet experience and this is going to be a troll pet i'm going to have it at mega with solely ice giver everything at one <laughs> so yeah it's pretty cool it looks really wonky but by all means let use your energy and level the pet too because there's nothing more horrible than a pet that you're using for leveling like get leveling it up using the quest experience and it failing horrible <laughs> so it's it's very useful however i wouldn't 
completely neglect using your energy to spend on your pets, essentially. All right, now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna talk about how I maneuver the two round kill. So I'm gonna pull up my other character and we are going to go to the highest level mob just to show how potent this strategy is. Now, before I start, I just wanna quickly go over what essentially you should have in your deck being the max level character. So my character is level 50 or 150, 170 damage, 29 resist, you know, the good stuff. I'm telling you, this works perfectly even at level 100 with 120 damage. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> so essentially what you wanna have in arc one is just temps, you're fine with that. Perfect, you're fine, just AOE and enchant. Once you hit around, I wanna say chrysalis, that's when you want to start having taking some of those out adding fire dragon if you're fire i like to add storm lord and two temps just to finish them off if i miss a crit or something like that and then what you want to do is from then on out you want to have a deck that looks like this so as you can see it's six cards and then we want to have one single blade and i'll tell you why in a little bit but that's seven cards Pull them up every single time your big thing you want to have tempest up every single time i'll get into that in a tiny bit so i will be showing you from each point of view i know i said i was going to go for the harder ones for that for the highest health mobs these have 4610 health i think that proves my point enough so we are going to run into the battle and or just are you kidding me? <laughs> Let me go on this one. And this is definitely going to vary based on your two person mount. So, as you see, this is a perfect example. We didn't get the third one in, so we're going to take that time to blade as well as. Oh my gosh. We're gonna potent blade. This is like the typical battle. It's not usually this insane. I'm gonna try to get all three in the battle when I see my storm's point of view, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so you wanna mass faint, and then he got bugs, and then a storm lord is up. This is what I do most of the time if I have to wait a turn is I don't want to risk it, I just Stormlord, but we're going to Tempest, just to show you how much the damage actually is. It's pretty insane. I will give kudos to my wizard. <laughs> I worked hard. Fifteen K kills most of the bosses. Insane, right? <laughs> so, with that being said, we are going to show this from the storm's point of view. And I will get all three just so you can see how much the mass faint tempest does. Alright, so everybody's in the battle. Temp and then mass faint. Oh, lovely, and it's our turn first. <laughs> there you go, six K. Defeat any mob in the game. <laughs> now, okay. This is where we start making the boss two round strategy, okay? Bear with me here. So essentially what you do is you run up <laughs> and then make sure he gets in the battle. So Cody is gonna blade. I am going to potent trap or potent faint, sorry. <laughs> 
I think I got the cheating one. Oh god. Yep, I got the cheating one. And then I po I mass me. And see, he failed pipped. So let's see if this does 18k. I don't think it's going to. I'm not sure. It might be. <laughs> it's times like this where I hate my pips. I'm not saying this is 100% foolproof. If I could Stormlord, it would do 20k. But let's see what the Tempest does, because now I'm kind of curious. <laughs> So yeah, essentially that is the two round kill. Uh, it'll carry you through every single world. The majority of bosses have under 20k health. If there is a certain exception, take an extra round blade. You can even triple faint because of the extra faint that you have. It'll make it do 47k. So essentially that's it. Um, the whole strategy that has been covered I hope I didn't make it too confusing. However, the couple things you should learn before. If you want to unlock Potent Trap and Sharpen Blade, you have to do the Astral Quests in Zafaria, which is in Zamunda and the Drum Jungle to unlock the Obelisks. Don't know why, maybe they just hate us. <laughs> anyway, on top of that, I would recommend doing some of the spell quests you don't have to do all of them, just get some of the ones that'll hit. For example, on my ice, Frost Giant, uh, I also got Snow Angel, and that pretty much carried me through the solo part of Chrysalis as well as the Sun School and the Star School quests in Azteca. It, it, it makes it easier. <laughs> uh, I think that's pretty much it for this video. If I missed anything, I'll be sure to add it in the next part. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would love it if you left a like. If you guys like me and like what I do and want to see more of this type of content, I would love it if you subscribed and followed along. I'm obviously going to post my clown shit. It's going to happen. But I thought I'd just sit down and kind of detail how I level through the arcs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.